Hey guys, Edbud here, back with your weekly dose of running news. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you enjoyed the channel and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. And it really helps us out here too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Dank I should. Story one today. Nike is set to drop a limited edition version of the Pegasus 38. You guys know how much I enjoyed the 38 when I reviewed it recently. I quickly got to 100 miles in it and my views on the shoe only improved over time, like a fine wine. There's a special mismatched edition coming out though. The colour themes here are supposed to display the rich tapestry of Pegasus history to show a spectrum of all the different models apparently. There's dark smoke, grey, white, flash crimson and vault all mixed together. Certainly is an interesting concept, I suppose. I believe the shoe's available in the UK now to Nike members, though I'm not sure how I feel about this mismatched running shoe vibe. I do like the Volton Red inside the uh, insole on one of the shoes, but that white version of the Pegasus is gonna get pretty dirty pretty quickly. And then what do you do? Do you like clean one of them and leave the other one the same? I don't know. Maybe it will slowly become the same shoe over time. I guess you could paint it as well, couldn't you? Get the paints out, spray it maybe. You could dip it in some ink. Is that a thing? Price is as per the standard retail model of 105 Earth credits. Pounds. Let me know where you stand on this mismatched shoe idea. I mean, we've seen that in Fragment Dunks, haven't we? In the SB Dunks as well, they produce two that are completely different sometimes. Do you remember there were some people that were buying two pairs of Vaporfly Next Percents, the pink ones and the green ones, and mixing them up? That was odd. I mean, at least with the Pegasus 38 mismatched version, you can see there are some similarities there. There's some symmetry, slightly. Let me know how you feel on it down in the comments, guys. Story two. Apparently June the 2nd was Global Running Day. Every day's running day to me. But there were all sorts of new releases that people seem to have been holding back on, ready to unleash them on this special running day. Who came up with that? Hallmark or something? Socony, mysteriously or not, dropped the Endorphin Pro 2 without any sort of real fanfare at all. They just went, there you go. Here it is. I wouldn't have known it had released here in the UK unless a couple of the viewers had actually let me know about it. It was available in quite a few stores. I don't think it was just Saucony. I think it was quite a few other places that you could grab a pair. Sadly though, the red ones weren't available. I really wanted those. But I'll have to put up with the uh, Scotland style colorway. That's all right with me. I've always liked Outlander and Braveheart and stuff, so. I'm sure I'll get on with it. In fact, I'd really like to go to Scotland, you know, when we're allowed to travel properly again. I want to go up to the Highlands and just sit there for a while and not have to sort of do anything else. That would be quite nice. I like the wind and just the peaceful nature up there. I think it'd be quite good. Anyway, I better get back to the running news, hadn't I? <laughs> Garmin launched a new base level watch as well. I think it's sort of aimed at being a competitor to the Pace 2 from Kouros. It's called the Forerunner 55. I like the name. It's a good name. I think a lot of uh, running watches that are lower in price don't tend to have proper GPS capabilities and rely on the runner having some sort of phone or something to utilize the capabilities built in within that. The 55's got it though. In spades. Comes in four colors and features your standard pace time and distance metrics. It's also got a built-in heart rate sensor too. And it'll even suggest runs for you to do. It will like coach you through the week. Mine told me to take a rest day today, and in fairness, if I was ever gonna take a rest day, judging by the way I feel, it's probably today. So maybe there's something in it. You know, maybe it is actually accurately monitoring my progress, who knows? I think they dropped like a update to all of their watches recently. It seems to have put in loads of new features onto my watch on my uh, 245. I'll have to dig into those new features, like a running Alan Titchmarsh. They also reckon that the full run of 55 will last two weeks before you need to charge it. That's amazing. I can't even last a whole day these days without having to recharge. As I say, if you've got a Garmin, see if you can update your watch, because it's put loads of extra stuff on mine, and some of it's useful. I think that Garmin 55's out now in the UK. I'm not so sure about other territories, though, so do have a little look via the old World Wide Web. If you're wondering, I am feeling a little bit bunged up today, guys, so I don't know if it's like sort of hay fever or something. Just feel a little bit hot and bothered. I'm sure I'm okay. Been doing the old tests and all that, and 
they're all coming back negative, so. Maybe I just need a couple of cookies and some energy drink of some sort. I'm sure we've got some Explose Aid down there I can drink. That'll, that'll bring me back like a phoenix from the flames. Story three. Okay, so around about that time of year where it's Pride Day, and there's some awesome new running shoes coming out. Some of the manufacturers have really got on the case this year and produced some fantastic stuff. Some more colourful things. That's what I like to see. You never see me buying some boring black and white shoes. You know I love those really colourful ones. Perhaps not a running shoe as such, but there is a fantastic new version of the Nike Air Max Pre-Day that's being launched for Pride Day. Blue and white in nature, but with a tremendous rainbow swoosh on the side. There's also a version of the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit 2 with a rainbow Flyknit upper and holographic swoosh. I think it's a slightly more conservative take on the Pride Day shoe antics. Adidas have gone for an Ultra Boost 5.0 for their Pride Day offering, a red toe box, a green tongue, and hits of orange, yellow, and blue too. Definitely more interesting than the hundreds of Ultra Boost models that they seem to release month after month. They seem to just sit there, those two-tone versions. Not sure who buys them. Does anyone buy all of them? Maybe there's a collector out there that's got every single one. New Balance always produce something good for Pride Day. They've released a version of the Fresh Foam Tempo in this awesome unisex design by Zoe Lam. They do state it's black and Toro red, but as you can see, there's a whole gamut of other colors on there. All are available right now. I think probably the Fresh Foam Tempo from New Balance is my favorite of the three. Story four. I was reading an article on the T3 website recently. There's like a runner writer on there who'd recently done a piece that's kind of an advert really i suppose on the asics metaspeed sky they said that they'd worn them so much you know, on a sort of daily basis that they'd actually begun to hurt their legs they got a lot of leg pain and they start talking about how it's not a daily shoe and none of these super shoes are daily shoes and you should only really use them for racing but they couldn't help but use them because they felt so good and they felt so propulsive on a daily basis. They said that that huge stack of foam and the carbon plate had just caused them to perhaps overuse certain parts of their legs. It got me thinking about the whole ethos here. You know, there's those lure of the shoes, isn't there, to utilize them. You've spent a lot more money on them as well, so you want to get your value from them. But I'd suggest that these shoes need a little bit of time to get used to. You've got to slowly integrate them into your daily training. You can't just bung them on on a race. I mean, that's not going to work. You need to understand how they work and you need to build up your leg strength as well. If you want to get the best out of them and yourself, obviously, you aren't going to need to use them before a race. The stack, the foam and the plate obviously are just pushing different parts of your legs. So I think more than ever, it's really important to have a good varied rotation really in terms of the running shoes that you use. I think as overall strength increases from good training, you've got that schedule in place and you're nice and consistent and varying that shoe rotation, introducing some of the super shoes where possible. That seems to be the best way to do it. I'm not sure that utilise them on a daily basis, you know, all the time. If you've got them, for example, then just use them every day of a week. That's not going to be a good thing for you. Especially if you're used to running in shoes that don't have that type of foam or that plate. What do you think, guys? Do you think I'm completely off my rocker or am I on the right lines? Let me know in the comments. Okay, that's all the running news for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. A quick musical interlude for you. Back in 2000, I picked up an album by an artist or some artists, I should say, called the Webb Brothers. They're two sons of Jimmy Webb, the famous songwriter. Then he did a couple of albums. One of the best is called Maroon. Now these guys are really interesting. They had a drummer and a bass player, but they both sang together and they got very similar voices, I suppose. One plays guitar and the other plays keyboards. There's some fantastic songs on here. Some really varied songwriting, different types of songs, genres, and different subjects as well. Just a really great album. I can't understand why they weren't ever popular. They kick it off with a song called The Liars Club, where you've got all these people that are kind of, I don't know, living a lie, I suppose. They're kind of all in a gang, kind of trying to be like each other. It's never something I could understand. The Fantastic Pumping Summer People was a really great pop tune. Lots of energy in that one. Reversed guitars a little later, just driving drums. Fluorescent Lights and Suddenly Awake are fantastic tracks as well. Do go and check this one out. I think you'll enjoy it. If you haven't heard of them before, I can understand why. The Webb Brothers Maroon. 
Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when we launch those new videos. You can follow me on Strava as well. There's a link in the description, as well as my Instagram link. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.